Symbiosis, Mutualism, Commensalism, and Parasitism. Today we're going to look at how organisms interact with each other in the ecosystem. So how does one species interact with another? Symbiosis is a close and permanent relationship between two organisms. Symbiosis means living together. There are three kinds of symbiosis in today's lesson, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. The first one is mutualism. Uh, it's a symbiotic relationship in which both species get something good. That's why we put plus plus there. And the way you remember that on the test is you see the letter T, which is a plus sign, in the word mutualism. So we have two of them, mutualism. Both of them get something good. Here's an example of a big fish and a little fish. The big fish has a little bit of food that was stuck in between its teeth. The little fish comes along and eats the food in between the teeth. So the little fish got something good. He got a meal. And the big fish got something good. He got, a clean, he got his teeth clean, right? He went to the dentist. Both of them got something good. Mutualism. The coral reef and the algae exist in a mutualistic relationship. So the algae supplies food for the coral reef, and the coral reef uh, provides a place for the algae to live. It's in shelter. So since both of them got something good out of it, this is mutualism. Again, plus, plus. Here's some lichens are made up of fungi and algae. The fungi attaches the organism to the tree and protects the algae. And the algae provides food through photosynthesis. So again, one gets protection, the other gets food. Mutualism, plus, plus. Both of them get something good. So look at flowers and insects. The flowers provides food for the insects to eat, which is good. And the insects helps the flowers to reproduce. So both of them get something good out of it. So again, plus, plus, mutualism. Let's look at the second type called commensalism. This time, one of the organisms gets something good, and the other one gets absolutely nothing. It doesn't get anything good. It doesn't get hurt. It's like it never even existed. The way you remember this on a test is commensalism has an O in it, so that tells you that one of them gets nothing. Here's a picture of Spanish moss growing on a tree. The moss benefits because it has a place to live. It gets to go up the tree. But the tree doesn't need the moss. The moss doesn't really affect the tree at all. It doesn't get anything good out of it, nothing bad. So this is commensalism. Here's a clownfish that hides in the poisonous sea anemone. Uh, the clownfish gets a place to rest and be protected from bigger fish trying to eat them because if the bigger fish tries to eat the clownfish, he will actually eat part of the sea anemone and be poisoned. So the clownfish gets protection. The sea anemone doesn't really care that the clownfish is there. It's really not helping them any, but it's not hurting them either. So this is commensalism. One gets something positive, the other gets absolutely nothing. Here's a bird called an egret. It rides on the back of large mammals like elephants. And the bird will benefit because it gets a place to live short term. But the elephant doesn't really mind. It doesn't really feel the bird. It's not hurting the elephant. It's not helping the elephant any. Again, another example of commensalism. One gets something good. The other one gets absolutely nothing. Now we come to the third type, parasitism. Parasitism, one of the organisms is going to get something good. The other one is going to be harmed. So parasitism is a symbiotic relationship in which a member of one species benefits, that's where your plus sign comes in, and the other species is harmed, and that's where the negative comes in, parasitism. Parasitism involves parasites. Parasites are organisms that live in or on another organism and they steal the nutrients. Parasites do not want the host to die because if the host dies, the parasite dies. However, sometimes hosts do die. That's not the goal of the parasite. 
Um, the host is the organism that the parasite lives on. So again, the parasite does not want the host to die. In this example here, we have tapeworms. Tapeworms attach to your intestines and basically steal the food from the host. So the tapeworm gets something good. He gets food and the host is harmed because they're losing, they're losing their food. Here's a picture of several tapeworms. The head of a parasite grabs onto the digestive tracts of the stomach and intestines and, and steals the nutrients. You know, on the left hand side you can see a lung worm. Here's another parasite. So let's look over this again. Mutualism, you see the letter T there, which is a plus sign. Both organisms get something good. They both benefit, so it's plus plus. Parasitism involves parasites that steal from the host. So one benefits, the parasite benefits, he gets a plus, and the host gets a negative, he's harmed. Plus, minus. And in the middle, we have commensalism. Notice the O in commensalism, so that means one gets absolutely nothing, not help or hurt, and the other organism gets something good. So we have a plus and a zero. Community interactions. Uh, this technically is not symbiosis, but it is interactions that are happening inside the community. First, we're gonna look at its predation. It involves predator and prey. The predator is the one that's doing the hunting, the one doing the killing, and the prey is the one who gets hunted or the one who gets killed. In this case, the frog is the prey and the snake is the predator. Predation is when one animal eats another one. It is not, again, it's not symbiosis. And the reason it's not symbiosis is because it's not a permanent close relationship. It's pretty quick action here. The predator is the one who does the hunting or the eating, in this case, the bear, and the prey is the one who gets eaten, in this case, it's the fish. The killer whale swims beneath the seals and then goes up towards the surface, scooping it into the mouth. So in this case, the whale will be the predator and the seal will be the prey. Predation is found in all ecosystems and includes organisms that eat plants and animals. The animals that the predators eat are called the prey, and the one who does the eating, again, is called the predator. How does the predator and prey relationship affect the population? It's common sense. If the number of prey in a population goes up, in other words, the ones who are being eaten goes up, well, then the predators are going to be more likely to come into the area because there's more food, so the predator population will also go up. But if the predator population goes down, in other words, the one doing the hunting, the ones doing the killing, if their population goes down, then the prey population is going to go up because they're no longer being hunted, at least not in that high number, so their population will go up. There's some other interactions we're going to talk about. One of them is cooperation, one of them is competition. And let's look at the predator and prey relationships. The predator, again, how the prey populations are distributed, fish in large groups, for example. So how can the fish protect themselves, who are the prey, from the predators? One way to do this is to, again, be in large groups. The prey can also affect the location number of the predators. So for example, birds feeding on insects migrate to the areas where the insects are. So if you're a bird and you're hungry, you're gonna to go to the areas where the insects are because that's where your food source is. So predators move where the prey are. And the prey can protect itself by being in large numbers to protect itself from the predators. So we look at this picture here, the prey population on the far left is kind of high so the predator starts to move into the area and they start to eat the prey. And so the predator population is going up because they have plenty of food. As the predator population goes up, the prey population is gonna go down. 
And at some point, the prey population goes down so much that the predators no longer have enough food to survive. So their population goes down. As the predator population goes down, those are the ones that's doing the eating, the prey population goes up because they're not being eaten as much. So you can see they have a direct relationship on each other. Competition. Organisms compete with each other. For example, if you had one milkshake and you were on a date and you had two straws and both of you start drinking the milkshake, it's competition going on. Who can get the most milkshake in the shortest amount of time? Competition. Competition is the struggle between individuals of different populations. They could be in the same species or they could be in different species, it doesn't matter, but they are competing because there's a limited resource. Maybe there's not enough food for all of them, so they compete for that resource. Humans, for example, compete for a resource called money. So within a, spe within a species, an ecosystem, they compete for resources. Organisms compete for food, water, space. In the ocean, dolphins and whales and large fish all compete for the smaller fish. They're all trying to get the same food source. It's competition. Competition can happen within the same species. For example, plants and trees. The higher they grow, the closer they get to the light, and the ones who are under the taller trees get less light for photosynthesis. So the trees compete with each other. Competition can be between different species. For example, hyenas and vultures are both competing for the remains of the dead animals. Same food source, the competition. In mating season, the red deer uh, males will compete with each other to, and fight each other to see who gets to mate with the females. Competition. In this case, it's the same species. Cooperation is when organisms work together so that both of them can benefit. For example, killer whales hunt in pods, which are groups. It's a lot easier to hunt your prey if you have several of you uh, that can surround the prey and attack it together. Ants, bees, and termites of the same colony have different roles and responsibility. They're cooperating with each other to get a job done. Despite having different jobs, all the ants work together for the good of the colony. So they all have their own roles, but they're cooperating with each other. So we're going to look at some pictures here, and I'm going to give you a little time to, to guess which interaction you think is occurring. As we said earlier, this is cooperation. The bees are working together for the same purpose, for the same to, to make sure the colony is strong. Mutualism. Both the crab and the anemone got something good from it. Commensalism. So the shrimp got a free ride, and the sea cucumber didn't really get anything good or wasn't hurt at all, so this would be commensalism. Remember the O in commensalism? One gets nothing. Competition. Purple sea star consistently feeds on the barnacles that are the greater number. They all feed on the same type of barnacles. That was a giveaway for competition.
Commensalism. Remember the O in commensalism means that one gets nothing, it's not help or harm. So in this case, the bird uh, not only gets a free ride, but uh, he also gets insects that get stirred up from the cattle walking around. So the bird gets a free ride and food. The cattle doesn't even feel the bird on them. It's not being helped or hurt. So this is commensalism. Mutualism, don't forget the T means both of them get something positive, plus plus. The bird gets food and the antelope gets rid of its parasites. So both of them get something good here. Don't forget predation means predator and prey. In this case, the dragonflies eat the mosquitoes, so the dragonflies are the predator and the mosquito is the prey. Mutualism. In this case, both of them got something good. 